Welcome to The Conversation. My name is Brendan Malone, and in this episode, I want to talk about why the central themes of Easter are so very, very important to us at this moment in our history. So here we are, it's Easter weekend 2021 and for most people in the West that means a couple of days off work and the reason we get those days off work is because in the Christian West this is the festival where traditionally we remember the events of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, that sort of central moment in the whole Christian story which underpins so much of who we are in the West. Now, I would suggest to you that I think that we're at a moment in our history and what's going on in our culture where the central themes of mercy and forgiveness and redemption are just more essential than they've ever been before for us in the West. And the reason I think that is the case is because we are now finding ourselves in a situation where we are being overwhelmed and swamped by a a doctrine, an ideology that some are calling wokeism, but what it really is, is critical theory and cultural Marxism and Unlike the Christian vision of reality, critical theory and cultural Marxism really presents a parody of that vision of reality. In a nutshell, the Christian vision of reality basically goes like this. Our first parents rebelled and committed a serious act of disobedience against God, and so sin entered into the world. But God, being an all-merciful and all-loving God, did something that he really didn't have to do at that stage, and he put in place a plan to bring about the redemption and forgiveness and restoration of humankind. And that plan involves his son, Christ, who comes to earth, uh, takes on human form, experiences all the sufferings and trials and tribulations that we go through, and then dies a very painful and brutal death on a cross, an atonement for our sins, and that opens the pathway to redemption, to healing, to forgiveness. Really, it's this profound act of merciful love that human beings don't deserve, but God extends to us anyway. It's what we call grace in the Christian scheme of things, when you get something that you don't actually deserve. Now, this stands in stark contrast to the uh, critical theory and cultural Marxist doctrine of reality. Their doctrine of reality is all about power. Who has power? It's a fixation really on power. Who's got it? Who doesn't have it? Who's the oppressors? Who's the oppressed class? People who are deemed to have the power are deemed to be part of the cultural hegemony. They're part of the privileged few. And they are blamed and cursed with a sin, if you like, of original sin, of causing all of the evil in the world. But here's the thing. Unlike the Christian vision of reality, There is no forgiveness of sins. There's no redemption. There's no washing away. All you can do is keep making constant atonement for your privilege and for your what is deemed to be your sin, but you can never be cleansed of it. You can never be redeemed. And there is no hope really of oneness either amongst human beings in this scheme of reality. The best you can ever hope to be is an ally with someone who is deemed to be in an oppressed class. Basically, it's just a very dehumanizing and destructive vision of reality and society and what it is to be human and our interactions with each other. Now, this is a moment in our history where critical theory, cultural Marxism finds itself in a position of ascendancy. And there's a real problem here because what that means is there is a lack of of mercy. There is a lack of redemption. There is really a lack of forgiveness. It's all about blaming and punishing. That's what happens when you fixate on power. When you fixate on power, it very quickly shifts into a fixation on revenge and taking punitive action against those you deem to be the oppressors, those you deem to be the ones who have stolen power, those who you deem to be the ones who are hoarding the power for themselves. It's a dangerously reductionist, overly simplistic, to the point, as I said, of dehumanization and destruction and danger for all of us. It's it's a vision that actually is not good for the flourishing of human societies. But in the midst of this, and as a total stark contradiction, stands the whole time of Easter and this this weekend that we now find ourselves in the middle of and in in the central sort of heart of, of, of this Easter festival is this idea of this abundant mercy that is given to us that we don't deserve and which we should extend 
to others. In fact, Jesus himself tells us this when he says at one point, you know, everyone says it's all about an eye for an eye, but I tell you, love your enemies. Forgive those who persecute you. Pray for those who hate you. And, and then he actually gives the most powerful demonstration of that, which is what we remember at this Easter time, with this total self-giving act of love on the cross. You see, this is the kind of mercy that our society is desperately lacking. And, and what that doctrine, that Christian doctrine, which lies at the heart of the Easter festival, really tells us and teaches us is that the most powerful thing in the world is an outpouring of mercy and forgiveness. It's a total contradiction to woke culture, which doesn't have that concept at all. And here's the thing about that. What this means is that it requires us to do things that are really hard and difficult because the human inclination is towards an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You wrong me and I will wrong you. But what lies at the heart of Easter is this message of we should be extending mercy and grace to the people around us. And when we do that, good things happen. One really clear example I heard about this in the whole question of race relations was about a guy called Daryl Davis. And Daryl Davis is a black man in the US who has successfully brought a lot of men out of the Ku Klux Klan simply by extending authentic and genuine friendship to them. He befriends them. And then he that friendship, that mercy is the catalyst which brings them out and causes them to reject the lifestyle, the ideology of the Ku Klux Klan. Now that's quite powerful when you think about it because what he is doing is he is doing something to those other men that they don't deserve. In actual fact, if you look at it at a purely sort of a, uh, sort of power dynamic and sort of justice-based focus and nothing more, you would say, well, the only natural response to someone who embraces a belief that they are racially superior to you is to actually keep them at a distance in some way. But the message of Easter is no, show those people mercy, the kind of mercy they don't deserve. And Daryl does that. And guess what? People respond to that and really good and powerful things happen in the world. It's a model for all of us. If we are truly interested in actually addressing injustice in society, if we are truly interested in bringing about a more flourishing human society, and by the way, let me just say as a side note, there will never be a perfect human society. That is a utopian fantasy and it's a dangerous one. And whenever we set about trying to create the perfect world, very bad things happen quickly follow on as a result of that. So we can never achieve perfection, but we can certainly, I think, create a society in which human flourishing is better enabled. And the way to do that is to reject the doctrine of critical theory and cultural Marxism, which is fixated on power and quickly falls into revenge and has no method or mechanism for forgiveness and genuine redemption and restoration of peoples. Instead, we need to embrace the central message of Easter, which is actually all about extending grace and forgiveness and mercy to other people, even when they don't deserve it. And if more of us did that, and if more of us had that as our starting point instead of a fixation on power, then I guarantee you that our culture would be transformed for the better and there would be a whole lot more justice in the world. Thanks for watching this episode of The Conversation. Don't forget to like, share, and give this video a thumbs up. That all helps the channel. And wherever you're watching, please subscribe. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit the little notifications bell as well. That way you'll get updated about every new piece of content that we publish. A huge thank you to everyone who is supporting us at patreon.com forward slash leftfootmedia. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help to ensure that this great content keeps happening. So that's patreon.com forward slash leftfootmedia. As little as a dollar a month or as much as you'd like to contribute. And a huge thank you, as I said, to everyone who made today's episode possible. You guys are awesome. I'll see you next time on The Conversation. <music>